Good morning, welcome to the Restoration Station. My name's Pete and this channel has been set up to document the restoration of a period property that I've purchased in the last couple of weeks. Um, it's a traditional uh, Victorian cottage built in around the sort of 1860s, maybe even a little bit earlier, we're not 100% certain. Um, and I've been meaning to do some YouTube videos on houses that I've renovated in the past, but I've just been so busy I haven't got around to doing it. But I really thought that this house lent itself very well to this subject matter, um, and so I was really keen to get started right from the very beginning. So. As I say, owned it for a couple of weeks. I've moved a few tools and equipment in that I'm going to need. I'm not a professional builder, although, you know, having renovated houses in the past, I've got some experience, but take everything that I say with a pinch of salt. Equally, if you know exactly what you're talking about and you've got any hints, tips or advice, please do let me know. Obviously, like, subscribe, any questions or comments in the section below, and I, I'll do my best to, you know, put links out and all that sort of thing. That's what I'm supposed to say in this situation. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to just give you a general feel for the property, and I thought the way that I would do this is very much like the first estate agent viewing. So when you first go to see a house, um, you get sort of 10, 15 minutes, I want to try and keep the videos as short and sweet as possible, not too much waffling, although I do struggle with that, and um, just to give you a general feel for the place, what it's like right now, and some of the immediate challenges that jump out. Um, so, you know, there's quite a lot of structural work being an older property that's going to need attending to. I don't want to give you too many ideas in this video about what my thoughts and ideas and plans are. Um, obviously those, those are sort of starting to formulate now, but I just wanted to, uh, to show you first impressions. So as I've got a bit of a face for radio, um, without further ado, let's head outside and I'll talk you around the property itself. So out through the front door and there's a lovely cottage garden out the front here but no parking that was one of the first things that I noticed when I first turned up and here's the cottage so it's very much a two up two down Victorian cottage so two bedroom windows at the top and two living room windows down on the ground floor lovely sandstone coping at the front here obviously the garden has uh, got a little bit overgrown to the right there is a dropped curb and there's a shared driveway which is owned by the cottage next door however there's an express right of way granted in the title deeds so that means i'm allowed to use it there, there can be no quibbles about being able to get access to the back and you come up the driveway here in through a side gate and there you can see the rest of the property so it's actually an l-shaped property which uh, obviously gives its own set of challenges because most houses, uh, a sort of standard detached house will have four sides, a semi-detached will have three sides, um, and this has obviously got six sides and effectively two roofs. So in looking around at the general condition of the building, you know, obviously there was quite a few things that, that, that stuck out in my mind. Um, and obviously the, this, this access, you know, did raise a bit of a question mark in my mind. So I'll be very keen to hear what your thoughts are on that. Coming round the back of the property, there's a lovely long garden. Um, and then just to give you another view of the house from here, you know, you've got the back of the original cottage here, and then this extension, um, and then this sort of extra extension, which may or may not have been a stable, anecdotally. Uh, with space for maybe one or two horses and uh, a small hayloft above. But whether that's true or not, I don't know. So carrying on up the garden, got a lovely apple tree here. Through a little garden gate. There's a side gate here, which uh, I'll cover in another video, but there was a bit of a boundary dispute that I've had to deal with. So uh, I'll talk about how I've dealt with that. There's a nice bamboo at the side here, huge mature sycamore tree. This property has the church next door. And if we go up to the end of the garden, we can see through the hedge, we've actually got the graveyard. So it's very peaceful location, very rural feeling garden and a very large plot. 
Now one thing that I should say is I'm not considering building anything else on this plot. I'm going to make use of what there is here. But as I say, I'm not going into too much detail about what my thoughts or, or ideas are. And I'll be very interested to hear what yours are. So forgive my truck being parked in the way, by the way. But, uh, you know, there's some nice brick laid on the floor here. Um, now to talk about some of the things structurally that sort of jumped out at me obviously you can see where I've taken away a little bit of this render here so where I say work hasn't started I've done a couple of little test patches just to see what I'm dealing with but uh, being traditional building um, it's obviously built with lime with handmade bricks and quite a lot of cement has been used in the pointing which has caused quite a few issues which you'll see in a minute um, this section here you know especially um, and I've chipped away some of the uh, the cement. You can see there's lime mortar behind it, but whoever did this has done a real number on the place. They can't possibly have stood back and thought, you know what, I've done a fantastic job. I'm proud of myself. Um, obviously a steel lintel here. The guttering's not in amazing condition. Um, if I stand back a little bit, sorry for, for waving around, but if I stand back a bit, the roof in general is in good condition and I learned that it was done about eight years ago, which is a massive bonus, um, you know, with breathable membrane and reclaimed Welsh slate. Some of the mortaring needs a little bit of work, um, but you can see up here maybe, there's a bit of a dip. Um, sorry, there we go. There's a bit of a dip in that ridge line um, and I'll talk about why that is in a minute, but where that roof is obviously spreading a little bit uh, the walls are being pushed out slightly also so again I don't know if you can see but there's a bit of a bow in that gutter there and it's the same on that side of the building too um, the window here at the back that's completely rotten there are some cracks above that window I don't know if you can see but those will obviously need attending to and I will do videos for every step of what I need to do to this property. Um, so that's sort of the general condition of the outside. This this is cement render, it's caused quite a few cracks, there's obviously moisture getting in behind that. All of these windows, these gutters need to be sorted out. Uh, the ground levels are very high out here so really that, um, that render is actually brought down to the damp roof course and um, you know, I'd, I'd, again, I'll talk about in a minute some of the issues that are being experienced with that. Um, some of the bricks on the outside, you can see they're really, as a result of this cement mortar, they're all spalling. Some of these are going to have to be cut out, fully replaced. Some are maybe able to spin around and use the good face that is behind. Um, I was thinking to myself, it's quite likely that all of this cement pointing will have to be chipped out. Um, so there's the shared drive, no parking at the front, two chimneys, Oop. and they're going up where I'm going. So this road leading up to the church, so this property forms the boundary um, and runs all the way along. This is the sort of the long part of the L. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of damage to the bricks here. Also, um, there seems to be a sort of a line of damp uh, sort of on the wall in a upturned U shape. So all of this cement mortar is likely gonna have to come out and be repointed with lime. Gutters again, you know, not in good condition. More of this cement render on the outside, which is cracking. Um, and then what else is uh, something I'm going to have to deal with is, I don't know if you can see up here, but the damp proof course is actually where this line of render is. And that driveway has been built against the wall and it's now breaching the damp proof course in this area. So that's going to have to be sort of cut back, um, probably to allow to breathe. Um, this wall again, suffering quite badly with the fact that cement mortar has been used and bricks all spalling and uh, there's a garden wall here 
and this is this side of the boundary you can see a sort of temporary blockade has been put where where there was previously a gateway so as I say I'll talk a bit more about that in a later video on this side you can maybe see a little bit of bowing to the guttering there perhaps not a bit of mortaring needs doing on the on the roof and then obviously this is the boundary from this side from the church side so quite overgrown but an absolutely beautiful house um, so that that was really sort of some of the things that I noticed around the outside um, so what we'll do is I'll take you now back to the inside you can obviously see there's quite a lot of moss growing I think this is the sort of the north side of the building um, the back garden faces southeast so you get a good bit of Sun and also the Sun in the morning um, you can see there's a bit of a root growing here alongside the foundations um, shallow foundations obviously and that's coming from this sycamore tree here and there are quite a few saplings growing up against the building so uh, that that you know might need to be dealt with to protect the shallow foundations so that's the general outside so coming towards the inside you know lovely clay pamet tile path uh, front door has definitely seen better days uh, the windows they are single pane glazing and you know you can see that the window frames are absolutely they're just rotten falling apart and it's the same for every single window in the property unfortunately um, the lime mortar to the front of this house has actually been left relatively untouched so that is a massive bonus so going inside then um, as I say two up two down so there's two reception rooms on the ground floor so this is sort of like the first living room forgive all my tools first thing you'll notice really is sort of you know old parquet flooring blocked up fireplace and then as I spin around uh, you can see through to the kitchen there which is obviously the first room as part of that L-shaped that extra long L-shaped part of the building staircase to the right and quite an unusual arrangement because if we come through into this second reception room here you can see the staircase starts in here and winds around and if I step back down I'm through where I started so really very bizarre um, sorry I'm just tripping over things uh, so what I'm, uh, I'm I've got my own ideas for this staircase so I almost gave something away there but uh, please do let me know what you think so this this second um, reception room then there's a gas fireplace here uh, there's a meter cupboard you know which has got the gas and electric meters in um, it, so just to tell you a, a very brief bit of history uh, it was family owned this house and then um, unfortunately the owner died it stayed in the family but um, it was then tenanted for probably a good 20 years so the electrics and the gas have all been you know done to legal requirement um, but obviously think things are quite dated generally so there's some French doors which look up the garden um, I suppose if we come through then into the kitchen uh, so these are pocket doors and what I should tell you as well is the entire building has been re-skinned on the inside with stud wall and plasterboard um, and what has happened it's got a lot of damp issues um, because of all the cement mortar on the outside so do you remember that sort of that u-shaped bit of damp that I was talking about on the outside well it's really showing itself on the inside um, in there you know the other side of the building down here you know it, it's it's really struggling to breathe with that cement mortar on the outside um, and then if we go through into the kitchen it's a bit of an unusual shape it sort of it sort of widens out um, because it's not built at 90 degrees off the back of the main building it's it's sort of almost like a parallel parallelogram shape there's a 
a sort of nice original beam up there, small window. Um, I've got a few bits and bobs in here just because I'm sort of camping out occasionally um, before work really begins in earnest. So I've got a fridge, uh, you know, sort of plate, knife, fork, spoon, that sort of thing, and a kettle, obviously, and a, and a helmet, because that's what you need when you're eating your cereal. Um, and then this is the kitchen door, uh, which leads back out to the rear of the property. And what you probably uh, figured out by now is if you park at the back, um, probably this functions mainly as the front door. Um, so it's a bit of an odd impractical layout where the rear of the house you park and then you use the back door as the front door and the front door is essentially redundant as is the front garden. Um, this is a downstairs outside loo. Um, and now obviously with all this render here on the outside what I want to show you the first thing that you notice when you walk into this room is the smell of damp. It is absolutely sopping so there is a loo in here this is the only way you can access it from the outside the floor level is very high it's clay pamet tiles on earth and they've dry lined it but it's uh, it's less dry line now than uh, than wet line unfortunately uh, i've taken a bit of plasterboard off here just to have a look but uh, i mean you can see when i first came to view the property you know and i'm just seeing piles of sand on the floor and I'm thinking that is all the brick that's behind this. Look, I mean, look, it's just falling apart. It's just flopping off. So, you know, piles of brick where it's, where the moisture's not been allowed to escape on the outside. You know, the damp in here is absolutely shocking. You know, it's a dry sunny day and it hasn't rained for a few days and there's still sort of patches of damp on the floor. This is, uh, you know, look. So, terrible damp issues in certain parts of the building, I mean, most parts, to be honest. So that'll obviously have to get rectified. There's a nice beam up here as well. So coming back out, let me show you a little bit more about this sort of garage outbuilding thing and then we'll do the upstairs. If this is a bit disjointed, I apologise. So we won't use the garage door because uh, it's virtually impossible to open and close. Now I have put a few bits of equipment in here, but you know, straight away you can see obviously the brickwork is in shocking condition. You can actually see through in places. This lintel here is sagging. Uh, as I said earlier, there are some cracks in the wall. There's a whole mismatch of uh, mortars on the wall. You know, um, it's all cement that's been put over the line, but it's all been done in different times, and so it's all different. Um, there was a glass greenhouse here, actually. That's what this footprint is for. Um, but when I bought the house about a week ago, somebody wanted the lean-to, so uh, they actually came and took it away, and that, that was doing me a favour. But uh, going into the garage then, you can see there's obviously quite a lot of damp. You can see the damp on the floor. Uh, the floor is, is, is uneven. It's like, it's like the Himalayas. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a massive slope from sort of back to front. It's just higgledy-piggledy all over the place. Um, you've got, you know, spalling brick work. You've got piles of brick dust on the floor. You've got a rotten old ladder leading up. You know, the joists are not in good condition and where the walls are probably damp, um, you know, the bricks have obviously deteriorated quite a lot in here as well. Um, so it's quite likely that some of the ends of the joists are, are, are rotten and soft as well because they've been sat in wet brickwork. You know, lots of damage to the brick over here as well. And then this was a bit worrying. So obviously there's the steel lintel on the outside of this garage, but on the inside there's a wooden lintel. Um, obviously the brickwork isn't in great condition, a few cracks there, you know, sort of holes in the wall. But if you follow this lintel along, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of leaning back a little bit. And somebody's obviously noticed that it's leaning back. So they've used a bit of skirting board to support it against a potentially slightly rotten joist. 
So really, that piece of skirting is holding in the lintel which is holding up the wall. So uh, obviously we're going to have to do something about that. My first thoughts are structural stuff to get the building properly stabilised. It's been here for 150 years, you know, it's not, it's not falling apart straight away, but it's obviously it needs, it needs stabilising as a priority. You can see holes through the wall here. And then what I'll do, sorry for the rough and ready, there's no editing, I'm going to just nip up this ladder and show you as if, you know, you were viewing this for the first time. So up into this loft space. Ooh. I think locals have come in here and been drinking. This, uh, you know, Gareth's. What I, what I should say is this was absolutely chock full of junk and I've had to clear it out. I mean, there were, it's, the amount of stuff that was in here was unbelievable, uh, especially considering how bouncy the floorboards are, it's quite worrying. But um, I was talking about the roof spread earlier and it's because there are no rafter ties in here. Um, so what's happening is the roof sits sitting like a hat. It's obviously spreading, pushing down, pushing the walls out. Um, the wall plates are bowing um, on both sides. And I don't know if you can see, you know, sort of like a bit of cracking above that wooden lintel. But I'm going to have to speak to my structural engineer and we'll get some rafter ties in sort of like a third of the way up and across just to stabilise that structure. Um, and that, that, that really was one of my first thoughts when I came to see it. So even though I don't want to talk about my plans, you know, I'm quite happy to tell you that that, that was one of the first things that struck me as, uh, as necessary. And there's cracking above, you know, where that lintel is as well. So that, that's this room. Um, so I've got my ideas as to what I would do with it, but uh, I'd be very interested to hear what you guys have to say as well. So as I say, apologise for the rough and ready. So that, that's the outhouse in all its uh, soggy glory. And then what we'll do is we'll go back inside quickly. Um, I should tell you that the water main comes in under here. Now I don't know if you can see this, but it's very, very messy under here as well. And it's, um, you know, the kitchen's been installed onto dry lining which has been put onto crumbling walls and it's now falling off at the back uh, so very drafty i don't know if there's a lead water main um, that's a bit of copper pipe that's coming out the ground but uh, it may still be connected you know via some lead so i'll have to do some research on that so then going upstairs you've obviously got quite a low ceiling here which is very charming you know i'm, I'm about five foot eight and i've got maybe two inches above my head at the most um, Quite a high sort of hallway leading up the stairs to a, a nice window at the top. And as I say, being two up, two down, the first bedroom is to the right here. Um, and it's lovely and bright. Uh, and as I say, again, this, this is all dry lined with, uh, with gypsum plaster on stud walling. So you've got double windows. One looking out the back, up the garden, which is very nice. And one looking out the front. And I've just got a mattress on the floor with a duvet just uh, so I can camp out. Um, what I should say is the ceilings, they're all the original lath and plaster, even though the walls are gypsum. Um, and so I don't know quite what will happen when we start taking things back and what we'll find, but we'll see. Uh, blocked up fireplace here as well. Um, and here you can see out and, you know, a little bit more of the condition of the roof. There's a lot of cabling running around the building as well, uh, which I want to get rid of because that's not particularly attractive. And then so through a sort of a down and then up stair arrangement into the second bedroom. Sorry, I realise this is turning into more than sort of 15, 20 minutes, isn't it? We're at about 25 minutes now, so, so forgive me. Uh, but this is the second bedroom, which is a good size. They're all a good size. They're all sort of like, you know, four by four metres or three by four metres. Um, got another blocked up fireplace in here. So quite what I do, or quite what I find when I start taking that off, I don't know. Um, and so even though it was built at the same time, this extension was obviously added on 
to the original cottage. It's all the same brickwork, the same lime mortar that was used in the original building. So, yeah, I, I don't know quite when it was built. Um, there's no information, so we've got a sort of window out along the hallway here, and then on the left we have the bathroom. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I'll turn the light on. And it's actually a good size, well that's made no difference, has it? <laughs> it's actually a good size bathroom. You've obviously got a sort of, a bit of stud work here where the uh, where the soil stack is, and that actually goes down into the kitchen. So I'll, I'll if I remember to, I'll show you that. Um, you've got the bath area here, and the sink, and then behind the door, you've obviously got a cupboard with a water heater and a water tank. Um, so yeah, so it's actually a good sized bathroom and I think quite a lot can be done in here. You know, I think quite a bit of space can be reclaimed. Um, I'll tell you now that I'm thinking about a combi boiler, so that does obviously mean we can reclaim the space from the water tank and the hot water cylinder. And then if we go through here, we're now into the third bedroom. Um, and again, a good sized space, you know, this is a good three meters by three meters. And this is the wall that is on the, where I went up the ladder to look into that sort of hayloft, um, that's just on the other side of this wall. And then a window looking out again into the sort of the courtyard. And you can see here, you know, um, brickwork, obviously not in great condition with that cement, windows not in good condition, wires everywhere, but the roof thankfully, and the chimney stacks, not in terrible condition, if you can see that. And there we go. So, let me just spin you around. Oh, sorry. Sorry to put you off your tea or your breakfast or whatever. Um, that's the house, really. Um, obviously, there's a lot of challenges structurally. Um, there's a lot to do to sort of bring it up to modern spec. Um, I don't quite know how far we go. Um, one thing that I did notice as well, I'll show you, is under the kitchen floor, under the lino, um, you know, you've got a sort of self-leveling screed over what looks like some bitumen. So there's probably some old Marley tiles that have come up in the past, and that looks to have been laid on, on possibly a concrete subfloor. Whether it's a sub, uh, uh, sorry, sand and cement screed, um, or whether it's a, you know, a thick cement concrete floor, sorry, um, I don't know. I'll have to do some test pits and find out. But um, again, I want to talk about what uh, my, my plans with that might be. Uh, one thing I will say is a concrete floor does nothing to uh, to help with any damp issues um, because what happens is the moisture rises up under the slab, uh, it's non-permeable so it gets pushed out sideways, it makes itself uh, present at the base of the walls and if the walls have got cement mortar or cement render on the outside and they can't breathe then the, you know, the moisture gets trapped so it gets wicked up by the plasterboard and it's it, it just compounds any issues. Uh, this is where that soil stack comes down from the bathroom just upstairs. Uh, this little hatch here that, that sort of fell off actually, rather than I took it down. This is the underside of the bath, uh, so it's obviously access for the plumbing. So there we go, back where we started, back in the first living room. So that's the full tour of the house. Um, if you've got any questions, please do let me know. Uh, if I've missed anything or I've glossed over something, you know, remind me because it's difficult to get it all in. But that was really sort of like my first impressions of when I bought this place or, or when I was viewing the place to buy it. Um, I'm going to talk about a lot of things in turn having bought it and where I'm going to start. So like, subscribe, all those things you're supposed to do and I look forward to seeing you in one of my next videos. Thanks very much for watching.